Welcome to Learning Unit 4, Chapter 13. We're going to be learning about conflict management. And I don't want to fight you on this, but this may be very conflicting inside. And that's enough jokes for today. Let's get to our work. Our learning objectives is to discuss the significance of conflict management and for intercultural conflict, describe various types of conflict using practical examples, explain cultural influences on conflict management, apply various intercultural conflict styles to practical scenarios, and discuss different ways of managing intercultural conflict using practical examples. We'll also just quickly discuss the role of modernization, dependency, and participatory par um, paradigms in producing social change, and explain the three principles relevant to the participatory, participatory paradigm using practical examples. Let's get started on page 234. We start with conflict management. Now, I know you think you can, but you can't avoid conflict. Conflict occurs on an interpersonal level between you and another person, but it's something that we're going to have to deal with one way or another. Therefore, it does have to make you think that cultures can also have differences in how they manage conflict and how they experience conflict, and that culture can be a cause of conflict. Now, we do also have a what do you think of what types of conflict do you find to be the most difficult to negotiate? So you can think about that, and we're going to move on to the next section. Conflict can happen at a societal level known as political conflict. In the textbook, they give an example of environmentalists um, sort of advocating for economic interests about how the environment is being destroyed, as well as illegal mining, and this is a sense of political conflict. We also get international conflict, which is occurring between two different countries or states and how they're handling that content, um, that conflict that's occurring there. And again, the example here between Israel and Palestine. We also can have conflict arising from mediated communication, which is communication over technology. And we've talked about U.S. cultural imperialism and how the continuous domination of their country and their culture can lead to conflict as well. Because of the spreading of their cultural transmission, it could have an effect on another country's culture and lead to resentment. We also have Nikolai's quote on page 235 that talks about um, the Western culture as well and the, the domination of American culture that you can read through there. To combat Americanization, some countries are placing higher taxes and tariffs on foreign companies to keep out those cultural artifacts and try to promote more of their own culture. And Africa should do the same. We should focus on the knowledge and needs of our own society and try to enforce our motto of Ubuntu and being proudly South Africa. How do you think South Africa could lower its intake of westernization and its influence of other cultures? And do you think that our society here in South Africa, do we consume too much about America's cultural products? Or do you think that there is a positive or negative of these cultures having an influence on our culture? What do you think Americans think about South Africa? Our country should try to, as well as, allow African languages so there could be a shared equality because we do have 11 official languages. Another thing to consider is Ubuntu as the term here and the value that has in our culture. Social responsibility should also play a factor in our society. There are also other causes of conflict in the textbook as well. We have talked about international conflict, but this can also be things over struggle of resources like oil or food or water. From pages 235, they talk about the characteristics of intercultural conflict, which is saying that conflict is usually defined as involving a perceived or real incompatibility of goals, values, expectation processes or outcomes between two or more interdependent individuals or groups. So when they talk about conflict here, they're talking about how between us there is an incompatibility because of our ideas, because of what we value in life. Let's just say I value family and you don't. There's going to be that, that conflict that's occurring there. And because we are interdependent on each other and we inter and influence each other and we depend on each other, there's going to be a sort of pull between us that we need to fix. Moving on to the next section, we do have some scenarios there that you can look at. 
of how conflict can occur. And they talk more about the ambiguity that surrounds intercultural conflicts. In the next section, we're going to talk about the different types of conflict. And we'll be very interested in learning more about this section, about what types of conflict are out there. Let's see that new section.